Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to make a jig to make circles on the table saw. And if you're new to the channel today, I invite you to subscribe and check the little notification bell and let's get busy making that jig. Now despite what you might think, making circles on the table saw is really no more dangerous than doing anything else on the table saw. But if you're not comfortable with it, like anything in woodworking, you're best to not do it. Now today, what I'm going to be doing, I've got a piece of MDF, we're going to cut a circle on that. I've got some 3 quarter inch plywood we're going to use as a base. And I have a piece of plastic that I'm going to use as a miter slot material. Let me talk briefly about miter slot material. Basically it's three quarters of an inch wide and about half an inch deep. And I use plastic. I see a lot of people using uh, wood. And the reason I use plastic is I live in a place where there's uh, quite a, a range of humidity. And of course wood picks up the moisture and it expands. And I like to have my miter slots very finely tuned so they, there's no slop in them. And when you do that, when the wood is dry and then it absorbs moisture and it expands, it won't slide in the slot. But it even gets worse because there's been times when I've had wooden miter slot material where it would start going in at one point, then it would catch and it wouldn't go any further. So that becomes a danger. So that's when I went to plastic and I love working with this plastic. It's always the same. It's always nice and snug and it, it I never have to worry about expanding and contracting. And I even cut my own. I just buy raw material from the plastic shop and uh, I just cut my own and it's pretty inexpensive. Now I've already drawn a line on the back side of my plywood and if you don't pre-drill this plastic you end up with lumps of it coming through the other side so it doesn't want to sit flat on your material. I'm just going to fasten this down. Now we need to flip it over and we'll trim that little bit off the end there. Now this is going to be a simple jig, but the next thing I need to do now that I've got a nice straight line down here is to draw a line across the base because this is where I will be putting, driving my nail in somewhere along there. There's the piece of MDF and I'd drawn some diagonal lines on it so I could find the center for it. And of course it's square and I've also drilled a hole in it and I'm going to use a finishing nail like this and what I will do is drive that finishing nail through the hole in there. But what I want to do right now is measure the distance from here because I don't even need to draw a circle around here. It doesn't really matter. As long as where I put the finishing nail in my base here is less than this distance here and this distance is four and seven eighths. So I'm going to put this a little bit, just a little bit less than uh, four and seven eighths there. And that will be right there. And we'll put the finishing nail straight up and down in there. And that's all we need to do. Now if you look at this, you'll notice that it hangs over the edge here just a little bit and you, you want that, you want that to happen. Now what you don't want to do is try and cut that evenly down there. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to turn this diagonally and that's part of the reason for this line here, is now I'm going to start cutting off all of the edges and go through like that. And when I've done all that, I'm going to cut them one more time and one more time until I get a, a, a circle with a whole bunch of cuts on it. So I'm going to go ahead now and you'll see what that looks like. So 
So here's an area where you can learn from something I just tried. I really wanted to use my blade guard here, which also has anti-kickback pawls, and you cannot remove these. They're riveted on there. The problem with anti-kickback pawls is when you go far enough, you, the, they, they won't allow you to come back. So what I'm going to have to do, uh, as much as I hate to take this off, I'm going to have to take the blade guard off, and uh, I'll continue doing the cut. Okay, I am going to turn the dust collector on, but it's not going to make much difference now, unfortunately. The one thing that is going to happen, you're going to end up with little bits of wood over here. This is a good time for you to use your restraint and not try and pick these up while that blade is spinning. These can't, there's nothing that can happen with these. They can't do anything. They'll vibrate and move around, but it doesn't matter. You don't touch those until the blade has stopped spinning. Now you can clear that if you want. And there's what we've got. Now it's not quite a circle yet. I still have to spin it, but it looks almost perfect. You can see if you look closely, you can see where the light hits it there. There's a bunch of little straight cuts. So let's do the final trim now. Now where you're going to want to put your jig and your saw is you're going to want to put it just where the tip of the top of the blade uh, it comes across the top of your circle. So that's how far in you're going to go. There we go, and there's that circle. Now, if you look closely, you'll see in some places there's a little bit of burn. That's going to be pretty normal. Sometimes you can eliminate that by moving the piece a little bit further into the saw, but usually the best thing to do, you're going to be sanding, in most cases, you're going to be sanding the edge of this anyway, um, so you can just take that off. Now, the other thing that you can do with these, and I didn't do in this case, um, Sometimes you don't want a hole through the middle of whatever it is. Maybe you're making a, a side table or a coffee table. Who wants a hole in the middle? You don't need to drill a hole all the way through. You can use either a nail. Uh, a nail is actually best because it spins around. Uh, a screw is not good because it's going to grind your hole there. But you can put a hole just part way in and figure out how deep your nail's going to want to go into it and then drive it into the wood. Or you could use another another device, another piece of metal that's a plug that only goes part way in so that you don't have to drill. And, and that'll be just as safe. It'll do exactly the same job. It just save you from having to try and fill a hole in something. Well, there we go. There's there's the circle. And I took a second just to do a little bit of sanding. Uh, if you look hard, you can still see a little bit of burn, but it cleans up really quickly. Uh, you could easily now put a, an edge on that with a router or something. Uh, all sorts of things you could do. Really nice, quick way of making circles. And the jig, uh, if you wonder why the material is sticking out the sides, is because now I can take this off and put it on another jig if I want to do that. That concludes my video today. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.